everyone, my name is Sharika Johnson, a part of class 2K24, and I am studying a Bachelor's of Medicine and Surgery at the University of the West Indies Mona campus. So today I will be doing a dental hygiene and oral exam on myself. Please stick around to know what the findings are for this examination. A brief dental history of myself is that the last time I went to the dentist to get a cleaning was November 2019. I've never had an extraction or filling. It's important when doing a dental hygiene oral exam or an oral cancer exam to not wear makeup or to apply lipstick, lip balm or lip gloss to the lips. So I will begin now and I hope you learned something today. Thank you. Hi guys, it's me again, Sharika Johnson. And here I will be examining the skin of the head and neck region. So here I'm checking for skin lesions including growths, ulcers, infections, rough patches, and discoloration of the skin. The skin was observed to be normal. It had a soft and smooth texture and was not prone to sensitivity. There were a few spots, which is indicative of acne. The skin was not abnormal as there were no abscess, which if was present would indicate the presence of a bacterial infection such as methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. There were also no blisters, which if they were present, this would indicate impetigo. And if there was a red firm nodule, this would also indicate squamous cell carcinoma. Though no blisters were present, so these pathologies can be ruled out. Also, there were no rash on the skin, hence the presence of perioral dermatitis can also be eliminated. So this skin is normal. Here, I will be examining the head and neck lymph nodes. I will be checking for any abnormalities and enlargement of lymph nodes. So I'm starting with the supraclavicular lymph nodes. These are found above the clavicle and situated in the supraclavicular fossa. Palpating the supraclavicular lymph nodes. Moving on to the submental lymph nodes by applying direct pressure underneath the chin. I will then move to the submandibular lymph nodes by running my fingers along the length of the jawline checking for any enlargement and any abnormality of these lymph nodes. So I will then move to the preauricular lymph nodes. These are found anterior to the tragus of the air. Here I am palpating the preauricular lymph nodes and then the postauricular lymph nodes which are located behind the pinna. Moving around, I will be palpating the occipital lymph nodes, which are found at the nuchal line where the trapezius muscles, muscles insert into the skull. And then coming back around, I will be palpating the cervical lymph nodes. These are located in a Z-shaped pattern at the side of the neck, deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and shallow to the scalene muscles. Normal lymph nodes should not be felt. Lumps, lesion, asymmetry, and any abnormal findings would indicate some form of lymphadenopathy. These lymph nodes were normal as they were not palpable, no pain nor tenderness was felt. No enlargement of cervical lymph nodes were seen in this patient, hence we can rule out squamous carcinoma. And if the lymph nodes were hard, it would indicate some form of meta metastatic cancer. In this case, they were not hard. Now I will be examining the temporomandibular joint. Here I am checking for normal range of motion of the mandible and also listening for any abnormal sounds. I'm also checking the width of this joint when open, which for a normal person should be approximately 30 to 50 millimeter or three quarters of my finger width. Here, the temporomandibular joint was normal. Also, there were no signs of any restricted jaw function and jaw cramping, 
which may be a symptom of tetanus, and there was absence of orofacial pain, which may be due to dental disease and or disc replacement. So I'm just examining the temporomandibular joint, and here you can see that this joint is normal. Now I will be examining the lips. So right now I'm checking for lip definition. I'm also looking for any sun damage and integrity of the outer lips. The lips should have a normal and well-defined vermilion border, an indistinct border, blotchy coloration, dimpling, indurations, or tissue with a stretched appearance indicates sun damage and should be documented as this may be indicative of pathologies such as actinic keratinosis. These lips were normal as they were symmetrical, smooth, and moist. The lips didn't have any swollen red patches at the corner of the mouth, neither were they bleeding or blistered, which would be indicative of angular chelitis, which is a symptom of a fungal infection such as yeast infection. There was an absence of cleft lips, which is congenital in nature. There was also the absence of blisters, tingling, and or burning when touched, which may be indicative of herpes simplex virus type 1. Now, let's continue with the labial mucosa. I'm checking the upper and lower labial vestibule for color and abnormalities in skin integrity. Lesions, discolorations, and lumps may be indicative of canker sores, trauma, or oral thrush. The labial mucosa was normal, as seen here. They were pink and smooth. There were no signs of lumps or bumps, which are symptoms of aptus ulcer or canker sores, which are caused by vitamin D B deficiency and syphilis infection, respectively. There are also no patches on the labial mucosa, which is a symptom of oral lichen planus. So the labial mucosa in this patient was normal. So here, I'm reflecting the superior labial mucosa. No lumps, no bumps, smooth and pink. The inferior, back to the superior, feeling for any abnormalities, and they are normal. Moving on to the buccal mucosa, where I will be checking for lesions and discoloration of the mouth and any sign of leukoplakia, trauma, oral thrush, or lichen planus. The buccal mucosa is pink and smooth, as seen here. There were no abnormal findings, as there were no smooth surface nodule on the buccal mucosa which is indicative of buccal mucosa fibroma. Here, I am using a tongue depressor to show more of the buccal mucosa. There were also no evidences of trauma, which is a symptom of ulceration. And finally, there was no painless chronic indurated lump, which is indicative of oral squamous cell carcinoma most commonly seen in people who smoke heavily. So this buccal mucosa is normal. Again, with the tongue depressor, I am just exposing the buccal mucosa to check for any abnormal findings. Now, I will be examining the gingiva. Here, I am checking for color, tenderness, and lesions. 
Tenderness, swelling, and redness may be indicative of periodontal disease. I'm also stimulating the parotid gland to check for expulsion and consistency of saliva. I will now use my dentist mirror to examine the teeth, the gums, in more particular so I can see up close and personal. Here, the gums were healthy. They were firm and pink. There were no abnormal findings as the gums were not red, puffy, or showed any signs of bleeding, which is indicative of gingivitis. There was also the absence of bacterial plaque, calculus deposition, pulling away of teeth from the gums, and pus. If these were present, this would indicate early periodontitis. With the absence of these pathologies, it is safe to say these gums are normal. The gingiva here is normal. Here I am examining the tongue. I'm checking the borders of the tongue for any discoloration. And I'm also checking for any unusual lumps and bumps on the surface of the tongue. Any lesion present may be indicative of lichen planus, oral cancer, or candida infections. Here I use a gauge to see the sides of the tongue more clearly. The, the tongue was found to be normal. It was pink, red, and lack bruising and blisters. The tongue was normal as it did not contain any pedunculated lesions with finger-like projections, which is indicative of a papilloma. There was also the absence of white adherent patch or plaque on the tongue, which is indicative of leukoplakia and erythroplakia. There was no erythematous halo on the rough side of the tongue, so I can also rule out the presence of squamous cell carcinoma. So here, this tongue is normal. No abnormal findings were seen in this tongue. Now I will be moving on to the floor of the mouth. Here, I am checking for color and abnormalities. I'm checking for any firm tissue, masses, or feelings of tenderness. I'm also checking if there are hard lumps which may indicate lesion in the sublingual and submandibular gland. The floor of the mouth was normal as the tissues were soft on palpation with firm areas noted in the area of the suprahyoid muscles. There were no abnormal findings such as intraoral swelling which is indicative of lithiasis and some form of neoplasm. Also, there were no mucus filled cavity in the floor of the mouth known as a ranula indicative of damage to the salivary gland. So, in this patient, it is safe to say that the floor of the mouth is void of any abnormalities, any lesions, any lumps or bumps. There are no swelling felt in the floor of the mouth as well. So hence, it's normal. Now let's examine the heart palate. I'm examining the color and nodules and if there is any exudate. So here, I'm checking for lumps, tenderness, and discoloration. As seen here, it's clearly outlined where there is a harmless, painless bony growth located on the roof of the mouth. This is called a torus palatinus. And this mass appears in the middle of the heart palate and can vary in size and shape. It's seen in about 20 to 30% of the population and it usually occurs frequently in women and those of Asian descent. As I said, it's harmless. So other than this, the palate is normal 
as it is consistent on both sides in terms of its hardness. There are no lumps, tenderness, or exudates, and there are no discoloration, so I can clearly rule out the presence of squamous cell carcinoma, periodontal disease, or pyogenic granulomata. Again, the only thing here is the torus palatinus, which is... Now, I will be examining the oropharynx. So I will be looking at the color, the size of the tonsils, and any other abnormalities. Discoloration may be indicative of leukoplakia, and troth pain may be indicative of oropharyngeal cancer. So here you can see the oropharynx, you can see the uvula, that's part of the soft palate. There you go, the oropharynx is seen clearly. So the findings were normal for this oropharynx as there were no swelling observed and it was pink in appearance. There were no abnormal findings. The oropharynx did not have any enlarged tonsils or adenoids, which is a symptom of cytomegalovirus, CMV, or measles. Also, the oropharynx was not swollen, hence I can rule out the presence of pharyngeal cancer. So this oropharynx is normal. There you see the uvula right there. Hi there, so lastly I will be examining the teeth and I do apologize firstly for the fact that I was sweating in this video. Yes, this is where I became hot. So here I, I am examining the teeth for possible dental decays, fractures and erosion of the enamel, alignment, sensitivity and for restoration. So the normal findings of the teeth, they should be white, teeth should be fixed in the gum with absence of cavities, no dental decays, no fractures and no erosion of the enamel. All teeth should be aligned and not sensitive. Here I am pulling on the teeth just to make sure that they are fixed in the socket, in the gum I should say. <laughs> All right, so the teeth examined, they were off-white with no observed cavities. All 32 teeth were still in place with a slight misalignment at position number 20, also known as the second premolar in the lower left quadrant. Also, the slight discoloration of the teeth can be linked to poor oral hygiene as I am not diabetic, neither am I bulimic. There were no fractures and the teeth were slightly sensitive to cold temperature, which may indicate an exposed nerve root. So here I am still tugging on the teeth to make sure that everything is fixed in the sockets, no erosion of enamel, and no dental decay smile hi guys so thank you so much for making it to the end of my examination so based on the findings i did not have any abnormalities in terms of lymphadenopathy or anything that would be suggestive of oral cancer in terms of dental hygiene the teeth are yellow off or a little off white they should be white so that has to do with the fact that you know i'm lacking in terms of getting my teeth clean every twice per year um, that's every six months and uh, probably the food that I eat sugary food acidic food but overall I would definitely conclude my dental health and uh, oral cancer screening is thumbs up it's very good and in terms of reference I will definitely not need a reference because everything is intact right now thank you